The Flaming Lips. That's an old school Luzerne band, actually. Luzerne kids back in the early 2000s loved The Flaming Lips. The song is called Race for the Prize. We're racing for the prize. Ties right into operant conditioning and the law of effect. Man, Flaming Lips bring back the good old days of Luzerne, I'll tell you. I get some good stuff if you check out the Flaming Lips. There's one song out there called, oh geez, what's the name of it? The Flaming Lips do uh, oh, The Golden Path featuring the Chemical Brothers. Fantastic song. You should look that up on your own. We might even get there someday on a, word, on a song of the day. Operant conditioning and the law of effect is the lesson for the day. Uh, we've talked a lot about conditioning. We've covered classical conditioning, higher order conditioning. Today we move into operant conditioning. What the heck is operant conditioning? Well, it's basically the idea that we learn from the consequences of our actions. Do you learn from the consequences of your actions? My son is not a very good operant uh, conditioner, I'll tell you that. He does not learn from the consequences of his actions. Some are better than others, I guess. Who knows? We learn from the consequences of our actions. And we learn in a couple different ways. So we'll introduce some psychological terms to you here. Uh, the first, of course, being is uh, what we're going to take a subject, an imaginary subject, kind of like an experiment. We'll call them subject A, right? And subject A um, is going to behave in a certain way. They're going to take a certain action. We're going to call this like the subject response. Maybe it's an action or a behavior. And so the subject responds to its environment in a certain way. And as a result of that response to their environment, the subject might encounter a pleasurable outcome. Right? So sometimes this response to their environment, the subject is going to get a pleasurable outcome. And a pleasurable outcome in psychology, we're going to refer to this as a reinforcer. It reinforces the behavior or the action. It reinforces the subject response because the subject gets something pleasurable. And so that makes the subject want to repeat that action in a similar circumstance. They repeat the response in a similar circumstance. Now, on the flip side, the subject response might not deliver a pleasurable outcome. Sometimes the subject response or action or behavior to the environment or stimuli is going to be, uh, oops, a pleasurable goal, uh, an unpleasurable outcome. And of course, if the outcome is unpleasurable, then we sometimes refer to that as a punishment. Right? There's a punishment or a punisher effect. So the unpleasurable outcome is a punisher. And that leads to us, instead of repeating that response in similar circumstances, it's going to be unlikely to be repeated. So it's an unlikely repeat of the response. Okay, so the subject response to a stimulus, pleasurable outcome, right? And sometimes we probably need to go a little bit further. Uh, the famous psychologist that took a look at this, uh, Thorndike, he took a look at whether stimulus were being added or subtracted, right? So the response to the addition or subtraction. Of things to your environment, right? So it could uh, happen either way. So I'm gonna make a little grid over here. Let me see where my space is on the video. 
Um, I may have run out of space a little bit. I'm just going to zoom back in over here to the left a little bit. We're going to create a little grid. Okay, and we're going to refer to this as a Thorndike's Law of Effect grid. So over here, this is the Law of Effect. And we're going to do just a parentheses, give credit to the psychologist that came up with this. This is a Thorndike. And his operant conditioning grid is going to look something like this. Now, I want to clear something up right away before we get started with this. It's just like your basic four quadrants. Many teachers, and you may experience this in college, many teachers are going to do uh, something that looks like this, which I find super confusing, right? A positive, a negative, a positive, a negative. But in the case of the left-hand column, it's not really a positive or negative. Like a positive reinforcement we get. That's a pleasurable outcome. A negative uh, punishing, a punishment is negative. I can understand that. But when we do addition and subtraction, that gets confusing, right? Because then I can't like figure out which is which. So I'm just going to like forget about the positives and negatives as we would oftentimes see this. And I'm going to focus more on the actual words themselves. All right, if I pull in just a little tighter. Uh, and so instead of using pluses and minuses, we're just going to use the actual words. We have reinforcement. All right, we have a pleasurable outcome that reinforces, which you could think of as, as a positive. And then you have punishment, which we could think of as a negative. But I'm just going to use the words. Right? Reinforcements and punishments, or reinforcers and punishers. On the left hand side, we're going to use this idea of adding and subtracting uh, stimuli to the environment. Like, what is the subject's response when you add something? So, we're going to add a stimuli to the environment in which the subject exists, or we're going to subtract, we're going to take something away. We can subtract a stimuli from the environment. And so in this way, we can see addition is sort of like that plus sign again, and subtraction is sort of like the minus sign, but I, I don't want you to get confused on the two columns. So I just sort of prefer, while well, you'll maybe even in college, if you take psych again, you might see pluses and minus. I prefer at the high school level to use these, these words so that we really understand what's going on. So let's think about this. We're going to add something to the environment or to our environment, and the subject's response is going to result in a pleasurable outcome. What is that? Right? What does that really mean? What we're really talking about there is what we would probably refer to, and you can use your own education or what teachers do to try and like spur student behavior a little bit. You can even use that as a sort of grounds to come up with these, these words, right? If we're adding something that then results in a pleasurable outcome, sometimes we'll refer to that as a prize or a reward. Okay, I'm going to give you something and that's going to result in a pleasurable outcome. Okay, and I'm going to give you that, right? I'm going to add that to the situation. And so like if I give you candy to do work, which I have done with students before, I'm giving them a prize or a reward. I am adding something. Or if I promise to give you 10 bonus points, if you do an assignment, right, that creates a pleasurable outcome and I have added 10 bonus points. That's a prize or a reward, if that makes sense. On the punishment side, I can add something that punishes you, right? If you participate in this activity, I'm going to add a shock, like shock therapy. Right? Shock. So I'm actually adding the shock, and you you would experience that as a subject as a punishment. Okay? So uh, shocks. If in a school sense, like maybe I'm going to add some more time to your school day. So I am adding something, but it's really adding something that results as a punishment, and that might be like a detention. 
I'm going to give you a detention. I am adding to your school day, and the subject is going to see that as an unpleasurable outcome. And of course, uh, if we come back over here, that would make me unlikely to want to do that thing again. Okay, so sometimes I can get reinforcing, uh, I can get reinforcement by adding something, but I can also get punishment and keep people from repeating things by adding something like a detention in school or a shock, like uh, when you're training your dog to not go beyond the fence line. I've added the shock, I've added the electric fence as a punishment to discourage them from repeating that behavior, if that starts to make sense. Okay, on the subtraction side, same deal. I can remove something, right? I can remove something that is going to reinforce and create a pleasurable outcome. So let's think about what that might be. Um, we're going to subtract uh, something. So like in school, maybe like taking away a seating arrangement, right? A school district has a seating arrangement. So you know what? I'm going to get rid of that seating arrangement. You can sit next to whoever you want. And because I have removed or subtracted something that you generally don't find nice, right? You don't really find it pleasurable to begin with. By subtracting that unpleasurable thing, I can get a more pleasurable outcome, which reinforces it. So removal, right? Anytime we remove some type of unpleasurable thing, I can remove unpleasurable items, and that's going to result in a reinforcement. You kind of have to understand why those things are unpleasurable to begin with. Um, another example, uh, sometimes like uh, this will happen with drugs in like the medical industry. Sometimes there's certain medications that don't make people feel good, right? And I can remove or cut down on the prescription. I'll give you a great personal example, cholesterol medication. Cholesterol medication can make your joints ache. You know, you got high cholesterol, you're trying to not have a heart attack someday, so you're taking cholesterol medication, but that cholesterol medication really makes all your joints ache and you kind of feel logy. Well, a doctor might say, you know what, let's subtract um, that sort of like a drug, and I'll just write drugs, but I really mean medical drugs. Right? I can subtract those drugs and uh, that makes me feel a little bit better. I'm not getting the same sort of desired effect out of that drug, but I'm still getting a little bit by so kind of cutting down on my drug uh, prescription amounts. I'm trying to just clarify this, right? By cutting the drug prescription amount, that can create a more pleasurable outcome by literally taking away something. Okay, so I take away the amount of drugs uh, and I am getting a more pleasurable outcome because of it, because those drugs were making me feel really good. Uh, and then finally, last but not least, I could remove as a punishment. And I think we've all had this done at some point in our lives or not. I can subtract something from a subject's uh, environment in order to have it come across as a punishment. And that's the opposite. Instead of removal of unpleasurable items, now I'm removing pleasurable items. So in this case, it would be like taking away your freedom, maybe like being grounded, right? If you're grounded, that's different than detention. Detention, I'm actually adding something. I'm adding more school time. When I'm grounded, I'm having stuff taken away. Maybe I take away my iPad. That's what I do with my kids. Take away your phone or your car or your gas money. So now we are subtracting something. We're taking stuff away and it's resulting in a punishment and that makes you unlikely to want to do whatever behavior resulted in that, uh, that action, right? Or that result rather. Okay, so this is the law of effect. We can see that, you know, it can get a little confusing because sometimes when we think of punishment, we always think, oh, we're having stuff taken away from us but not necessarily. Sometimes punishment can be something is being added, right? Like you're gonna get shocked. I'm gonna install an electric fence. I'm gonna give you a detention and add more things to your school day. I think that's really where that sort of confusion comes in when it comes to the law of effect is it's sometimes difficult to discern whether a stimulus has been added or subtracted. And that's why I don't like those plus and minuses either. Okay, 
I'm sure I've repeated myself a lot here. Hope you got a little something out of it. That's the law of effect. We got some great discussions that are going to tie into this. Got a couple different discussions that I think are going to make good on uh, this type of thought processes. Great. I'll see you in the discussion. Make sure you participate. See ya.